Greetings, salutations, respect, and love. I am Scott. You are in the prog corner. Oh, boys and girls, I got a good one for you here today. You're not going to believe who I got here today. I've got Michael Whiteman from I Am the Manic Whale. Hey, Mike. Hello. And I've got the one and only the great Rio Okamoto from Scott. Ah! Oh, yeah. Ah! Epic, y'all. I- ah! I'm, ah, I'm, ah, I'm, ah, I'm, ah, no, it's Mastrophus. Look out. <laughs> Mastrophus is awoken again. Yeah. I thought he only came to life every hundred thousand years. Yeah. He's got back. He's back. Hey, uh, first off, thank you for joining me today in the prog corner. Uh, it is an absolute honor to have two of my most favorite musicians in the entire world join me here. It's just awesome. Uh, Rio, everybody knows who Rio Okamoto is by now. Uh, if you want, just briefly tell my audience who you are and what you are all about, Rio. I am Rio Okamoto. <laughs> I play keyboard. Yeah. I play piano. Mini Moog. Melotron. Yeah. Organ. And I play for Spock's Beard. Yeah. And I heard of that. Object. <laughs> and K2. K2. And uh, the Rio Okamoto project is, you know, there's another thing and uh, all other stuff. You're That's me. DPS. Yeah, deep, oh, yeah, DPS. Yeah, <laughs> you know that. All right. I, hey, I know a little bit about a lot, Rio. <laughs> and uh, we also have joining us, and this is such a nice surprise, the one and only the great Michael Whiteman uh, joining us all the way from Reading, right? Is that where Redding, we're at? Reading, UK. That's right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, tell uh, tell my audience who you are if they do not already know about you and your band. Uh, my name is Michael. I'm from UK and I'm in a band called I Am The Manic Whale. Um, check us out. We do prog rock, um, but also I was involved with Rio's Myth of the Monstrophus album, which was a very special and very exciting uh, thing to be part of. Exciting indeed. I mean... First of all, you know, we're going to we're going to jump all over the place. I we just talk about stuff on the prog corner. There's no format here. But, Scott. Uh, Rio. Scott. Rio! I just love your energy. It's just incredible when yeah. it's all your reviews. It's like, "Whoa, that's my guy. That's my nah, guy." Nah, 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 man. You know, the the secret sauce Rio is I only review the stuff that gets me really excited, the stuff that I love. So if if I'm lukewarm on an album, I'm not going to talk about it. You know, life's too short. You know, I'm not going to sit around and talk about an album I don't love when there's something by Rio Okamoto called The Myth of the Mastrophus out there that I can talk about. Or, uh, you know, one of Michael's great albums. Uh, I am the Manic Whale, man. I am a big, big fan. I, I've oh, loved man. you guys from the start. The first album was really, really cool. I, I dug that song Pages, and there was another yeah. song called Circles on there that really got me going. And then right. 2017, you dropped uh, The Gathering Waters or yeah. something like that. Yeah, that's it. Man, there was a song on there called The Lifeboat Man. Woo! Yeah. But then that leads us to 2020, your uh, third album, uh, Things Unseen. Well, uh, you know, this is kind of cool because... Uh, the deplorable word was my song of the year for 2020. Oh, really? And wow. Christmas was my song of the year for 2022. Bless you. Yeah. So, you know, all yeah, Evership was uh, my number one song for 2021. So we've already interviewed them. So I'm interviewing all the people who did my favorite prog songs. And the deplorable word was just amazing. I, I love that whole album. And uh, I'm wondering if there's a fourth I Am the Manic Whale uh Anytime soon on the horizon, Michael. Uh, I've, I've just been listening to it. Yeah, it's it, it's almost finished. Yeah. Um, the, the the sound, the, the music part. We've got artwork and stuff to sort out, but it's been mixed by uh, Rob Aubrey, who oh, mixed oh. Big Train and he's mixed Box Beard Live. Didn't tour. he mix your first album? He did, yeah. He's, he's wonderful. He really knows his onions. Yeah, oh, he's favorite. good. Yeah, check out a Big Big Train album if you question his bona fides. For sure. Those yeah, records all mix- sound amazing. The mixes sound amazing, and we're really happy with it. So awesome. I think it's and, the best thing and, you've done. And, 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 are we returning the favor, Rio? And it's got a guest appearance yes. on it. 
That's what I want to go. Go. So go go. pick up on that one. It has got a special guest I can exclusively reveal for the first time here um, from Mr. Rio Okamoto. Yes. Playing piano and Hammond organ and Moog on one of the songs. Oh, that's awesome. That's can awesome. Can you play that? Can you play that? Can you play that? <laughs> Do you have an MP3 in there? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, we can we can put all that in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, I'm telling you, uh, Myth of the Monster Fist. I know this was something that was generated by a whole bunch of demos that you had been working on. Most of it just you and the piano, I guess, maybe Alan, maybe on a couple things. Uh, but then you happened to meet Michael at a festival or something. And uh, how did this collaboration come about? Because it's like a match made in heaven to these ears. Just incredible. It was a it was a virtual festival. It was ah. the Fusion Christmas Cracker, organised by a guy I know called Steve Gould, and it had Manic Whale on it, and it had Rio doing a couple of things. And it, it was during lockdown, which is why it was all online. Oh, right, yeah. And Rio and I were both in the chat when my band was on, and Rio was just saying he really liked my band. Mm. And uh, to be honest, I was quite happy about that because I've been listening to Rio's music for twenty years or so. Big Spock beard fan. Oh yeah. And, and you do you do hear some of that influence in your music. Absolutely. Uh, I do hear a little bit of Neil Morris in, in some of the songwriting, but I also detect a little bit of a Christian undertone in uh, some yeah. of this music. I mean, the title of your last album, I guess, wasn't all that subtle, but <laughs> but I mean, yeah. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about your faith and and what that means to you and, and how it you know works yeah. to, to your advantage when you're writing. Great. Well, th thanks for asking that. Um, yeah, my faith is a really big part of my life. Um, I, I'm really involved with my local church. I do lots of music stuff there and I love spending time with my church family and, and worshipping, praising God together and uh, studying the Bible and learning about him. And yeah, that does come through in my writing. I've yeah. been involved in bands before that have been really kind of obviously Christian, whereas mm -hmm. with Manic World, it's kind of it's through a through a lens of faith so i'm writing about sometimes very silly things uh sometimes quite serious things that make me really angry or passionate but it's not like the music isn't directly about god and my faith but it's kind of all inspired by that and all uh all seen yeah through that. it's 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 an incredible piece of work all three i am the manic whale albums highly recommended but particularly that third one i just Thank i man. love it, it it seems to me like you, David, John, and Ben have kind of found the chemistry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, we're, we're really old friends. Dave and I have known each other for 30 years. We were at school together. Uh, ben, I've known him for nearly as long. John, I met a bit more recently, yeah. But we've we've played in bands together almost all that time. So, uh, yeah, we, we get on really well. We're great friends. We love making music together. And it, and it shows. And it shows. Uh <sighs> But anyway, Rio's looking bored over there. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I got I to gotta ask you a couple questions. First of all, uh, the myth of the Mastrophus, when you're handing over this incredible amount of work to a guy like Michael Whiteman, what did you expect when he started returning files back your way? I had, I had no idea. I just had <laughs> no idea. Because I asked many people, and uh, there was a three guys say he's gonna walk, they're going to walk on a demo. They never got back to me. This is like, oh, okay, okay, that's fine. And uh, well, I'll find somebody. But this means uh, I don't write lyrics. Yeah. That's, that's my weakest, you know, point. And I, I write, you know, a lot of music, different type of music, but I need a lyricist to complete my album because I don't want it to be another keyboard player soul album, just a yeah. bunch of shredding and all that stuff, you know? Because that's, uh, you, you know, it's We've good. For, a couple of those right there. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. That, yeah, that song's been played before. <laughs> yeah, see, all, all those instrumental keyboard oriented uh, album, it's good at the moment, but it's not gonna last for a long time. You, I want to, you know, create album will last for a long time, just like yeah. the Spock's beer. You know, the light. You know, that's like that's it you know, forever. That you know, people talk about it. So that's what I wanted to do. To do that, I need a lyricist. So, although, although everyone knows Rio, that Spock's beard didn't really start until uh, "Beware of Darkness." 
<laughs> Come on, let's face it. The second Spock's Beard album is so much better than the debut. Uh, me too. And I think we know yes. why. <laughs> I agree because I love that. That's that's my favorite album. Yeah, really? Really? yeah so it's it's so dark. You know, yeah. it's so prog and dark. It's beautiful. You know, prog, yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. That one and uh, The Kindness of Strangers are probably my two favorite Spock's Beard albums. Just the yeah, songwriting so, is just so crisp and awesome. I'm actually so telling you, sorry, go ahead. I took go my on. vinyl copy of The Kindness of Strangers when I went to LA to do the gigs with Rio. I packed it in my suitcase. I flew it all the way to the States nice. to get Rio and Alan to sign it for nice. me. And I brought it back again. I love The Kindness of Strangers. It's one of my favorite albums. That was album. good. Yeah. So good. So good. Mm -hmm absolutely but okay so 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 all right just back to your question just just for a second all right so i sent him him a demo and he sent me back another demo with the lyrics lyrics in the melody that was watchmaker that oh. was the first song oh. I, nice. that's that's what i said oh okay this guy's something you know yeah. wow yeah, about just work. Work. <laughs> it worked it worked yeah but they, but it's it's totally different than what he sent me to the end of a you know production because oh, we've been working on after that for years for one yeah. year it's rearranging and this and this you know having a Johnson play this and Nick play this and, and then still after the, put down the drums and bass we're just, just changing changing all the time so but it's it's an, it's an amazing piece of work Rio and honestly. <laughs> I think it's the best box beard related record since Snow. Yep. Whoa. 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 Yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's as good as any Anil stuff. It's as good as any transatlantic stuff. Yeah. It's as good as any, uh, maybe not kindness of strangers. That, that, that's uh, not getting crazy. Uh, Apostrophus is just so good. Man, yeah. listening to, you know, you talk about the, the, the Kaiju, uh, you know, the Godzilla <laughs> monsters and all this stuff. And here goes Michael with this story and he puts it in the UK. I know. <laughs> yeah. what, what was that all about, man? Everybody knows that monsters are supposed to be wiping out Tokyo, not London. <laughs> or Basing Stoke, or whatever you want to call it. It'll be Basing Stoke. Yeah, I, I think we kind of missed out on having monsters destroying huge parts of the. <laughs> There's War of the Worlds, isn't there? That's yeah. that's uh, aliens coming and destroying. I, was world. that your thought process? I mean, did you think about putting Monstrophus in Japan, or did you always figure it was going to be that small market town that <laughs> you know, developed in the Basing. southeast of the island? Yeah, <laughs> I, I used to work in Basingstoke and driving there every day. I used to sing, Beware, good people of Basingstoke. No way, really? On his no way. Way. Um, oh. That was like 15 20 years ago, and it's just that lyrics been oh, I didn't know that eating wow. ever since. Wow, yeah. hey, the only thing I know about Basingstoke is it's the hometown of Elizabeth Hurley. I didn't know that, but that's good. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's all I need to know. But and and, and Scott, Scott, and real. You're the only one put this song that you understood the concept of it. Because because a lot of people think it's like really cheesy yeah. lyrics and all that. But oh, but yeah. you captured it. it this monster monster of us is the we are we, that's us. Yeah. You know, it's all negative things in the war and COVID and all that stuff. He, people doesn't recognize people doesn't you know realize that's the song about and you yes sir. that on the sir, first yeah, review i said oh my god this guy this guy this guy knew and and, and you really listened to the album before you did a review like two oh, weeks yeah. straight oh yeah <laughs> you knew every part of it from this to this to this and that and the disco and, and all that stuff that's like oh, yeah Wow, he I can he, play he, most of it too. I, I, <laughs> but that's I, a whole other story. I, uh, I, I hung up my musician spikes a long time ago. This is what I do now. I what just do you play in front of a camera. <laughs> what do you play? I play everything. I play guitar, bass, oh, keyboard, yeah? drums, I sing. Oh, I've been in really? bands my whole life, but I uh, you know, I'm 60 years old. It's time to do something different. <laughs> You're younger than me. I'm just going to sit around and talk about the music that I love because 
I'm, I'm never going to write an album as good as Myth of the Monster Fuzz. It's never <laughs> going to happen. So why beat my head up against the wall? Why not just honor and pay homage to those artists whose uh, talent is way, <laughs> way more than mine mm -hmm. and uh, have a whole lot more fun with it? And uh, yeah, Myth of the Monster Fuzz, man. I got to say, that second song, that Turning Point song. Turning Point. Talk to me about that bass player. <laughs> yeah. ah! that's, it. that's it. Was it Doug uh, Doug Wimbush or something like that? Doug, Doug fucking Wimbush. This, this this guy is incredible. He's sick. He's a sick sick individual. He's sick. Man. He's sick. He 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 plays so many notes. He plays so, but well, the so first, tasty, man. Every first, note is perfect. The first song I gave him was Chrysalis, yeah. right? It's a ballad, right? Yeah. You're supposed to play. Dum, 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 dum. He played. When I heard that first time, I said, Whoa, too many notes. Come on, come on now. It's too many notes, right? So it, it, he was recommended by Johnson Mover. So I went to the Johnson press, hey, listen to this. It's just too many notes. I don't know what to say, you know. This guy, you know, I can't confront him. Just what should I do? Well, just tell him to play the straight. And he did. He did. <laughs> it's prog, Rio. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I compared with this. Too many notes, truck, and uh, really playing, you know, straight ahead. And it was not happening at all. This, this, like, wow. And uh, after I listened to for like a couple of weeks, I, oh, wow, oh, this is it. That, this, this is it. He's a bad boy. And he's, bad boy. he's just, he's bad boy. just he's so good. And I'm back to that Chrysalis song, which was boy. my song of the year for 2022. And Myth of the Mastrophus was actually my number two epic of the year. Oh. Uh, didn't quite make number one. Oops, sorry. But, uh, man. Uh, wow. Randy McStein. Yeah. You know, I knew about Randy McStein. I knew the fringe. I knew the McStein minimum stuff. But uh, that one song has made That's me it. a strong fan of Randy McStein. Yeah. yeah and and he, he also said, Randy also said, That's the best vocal performance I ever done. That's what he said. Yeah. The, yeah, one of the best vocal performances I've ever heard. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it really yeah. is. It is, and, and and to get to him, how many singers did we try, Michael? Yeah, we, several, yeah, five or six we, different people. Really? You, we tried so many different singers. Uh, Chewy, you know Chewy, you know we tried that, and oh, I even tried my wife Keiko too. Yeah, and uh, like She's five, other, yeah, five other people, and, and it wasn't happening. It just didn't happen. And Randy, the first, I just told him, just sing a verse, just from verse, one minute, and send me. I said, and he sent me back. He said, whoa, that's it. Find yeah. a voice. Yeah. Yeah, he smashed that. I mean, it's got to be pretty rewarding, Michael, to uh, to work with a guy like Rio and uh, all these amazing musicians that Rio put together for this thing and seeing your work. uh your collaborative work with Rio, obviously, come to life, man. It had to be. It had to be really special to to hit that final playback once the mixing and everything was done. You know, it really hit me when he sent me the um, the text for the credits of the album, and it was like guitars, uh, yeah. Alan Morse, <laughs> Dean Hackett, yeah. Michael Whiteman. What? Yeah. That's You're, not a list I ever thought I'd see. But, Mark Bonilla, uh, Mike Kennelly, Steve Hackett, and Michael Whiteman. Yeah. There you go. Hey, you're in the club now, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, he is, definitely. He is. He is. And, you know, this album has put Michael Whiteman in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. I don't okay, know man. if that was yeah. your intention or not, but it surely did, did that because I yeah. guarantee you there's going to be a whole, you know, new group of people that are just, you know, salivating over a fourth I Am the Manic Whale album that probably would have never been interested had it not been for this collaboration. And of course, it leads to the really the only question I have is, are you guys going to work together again on something similar? 
Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, and after, yeah, after after this album, I mean, during this album processing, and so many people just uh, send me a message. Say, can I play on your album? Can I, can I play? Can I write song yeah. for you? Can wow. I can I play? You know, can I collaborate? Uh, what how, what should I do? Just, I said, well, send me eight balls. Send me just eight balls. You know, just see what happens. And there's like four different drummer wanted to play right. on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, are you better than Nick DiVirgilio or Jonathan Mover? <laughs> oh boy, I don't. That's a tough one right there, man. Yeah, because I was gonna, I was gonna get a Simon Phipps because he played on my uh, oh, yeah. last album. Yeah, and uh, you know my first album was Jeff Bocaro, right? So the yeah. me to me drum is most well. Drum yeah. is most important thing. You, I agree. When you have a good drums and everything is easier. So, but uh, fortunately, you know, Nick, I love Nick. Yeah. I just love Nick's drums. Great. So, uh, yeah. so, he, so he, he sings. Oh, yeah. His voice he, is great, but. And he drums, sings. Yeah. So, uh, he, made, so he, he makes love to the, to the drum heads. Yeah. Yeah. Not a lot of drummers do that. Most yeah. drummers are angry with their drum heads. Yeah. With their yeah. snare heads and and they just attack them like they like they're really angry. But Nick uh, approaches his kid as if he's a man in love and he's approaching a woman and he's seducing her and he brings all this special, you know, tender stuff out of his drum set. He's he's really one of a kind, isn't he? So these two songs, right? He played on the drums, first song and the last song. The thirty minutes, yeah. He finished in one day. The whole uh, album for back in the seventies. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. And he it was in the studio, uh, Sweetwater Studio. Oh yeah. He, he he was. I didn't go. I couldn't go. So I was on a Zoom with the studio monitor and all that, and uh, gave him a direction and all that. But uh, six hours total. Yeah. Six I'm hours. about 100 miles from Sweetwater, and I still oh, really? have been. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. should go. It's a the... state line in Indiana. I'm here It's in a Ohio. Disneyland. It's a Disneyland. They got a hospital yeah. and the schools and, you know, everything. It's, yeah, I got to check it out Ooh. one of these days. You should. Definitely. But, uh, you know, so you've got all these different guys, man, and they're coming at you from, you mentioned Mirror, Mirror, and the title track with, you know, Rio's beard, all the guys from Spock's beard, past and present, with the exception of Neil, who's an extremely busy guy. So I get that. But uh, talk to me a little bit about some of these other cats that are uh, with you on the album that you're also performing with in something called Prague Jet. Uh, mm. Tell my viewers what this is, who's in it, who's involved, and 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 what it's all about, what the plan is here. So Project is uh, created by Jonathan Mover, the drum. Uh, who some people doesn't know him, right? Because he's like a ancient drummer. He doesn't. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't go up in the front. You know, he's done a lot of stuff in the past. Yeah. You know, but he just kind of stopped. So uh, he did. I mean, yeah. we remember him when he was in Marillion for a half a second. Yeah, right. that's a long time ago. Yeah, that was like '82 or something. <laughs> yeah, and he played with the Tubes, right? And he also this was funny. He also played with Alisa Franklin, just like I did. So we talked about it. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. We're gonna play a little word association game here, but first. I'm going to ask you about the Dick Grove School of Music. Oh! And, you know, not only did you show up there, you were what, like 21 or something 20, at the time? 22, 23. I was 23, though. So. But how many cats at the Dick Grove School of Music not only had an album out, but had three albums out by that point. And not oh. only had three albums out, but three albums recorded on three different continents. The first one was recorded in London. Your second album was recorded in Hollywood. Your third album was in Tokyo. Then you moved to LA. You go to music school. You got three albums under your belt. You had yeah. to have been like the like the bad boy on campus there, right? I mean. Yeah, but, the, but uh, I'm a street musician. I don't have any education. I play a little piano, you know, learn classic piano and you know when I was little, but that really didn't help. So I didn't know a, th a theory at all. I only wow. know minor and major and sevens chord. I didn't know anything about lines and sharp elements and scaling and all that. So it was time for me to get serious because 
uh, my album Making Rock, when I, you know, when if I flew from Japan, I, I'm totally Japan, Japanese right there, did not speak any English at all. <laughs> Went to the studio, so I put, and uh, Jay Graydon put the band together. So we got a Jay Graydon on the guitar, Steve Lucas on the guitar, Jeff Pokaro on drums, New Student House on the bass, and David Forster as my second keyboard player. Yeah, right? that, that doesn't sound like too bad a band to put together. I know. I know. So, so the, then again, two days, four hours each, eight hours, finished the whole album. Wow. And I was so shocked. So I have to move to Japan. I uh, moved to LA yeah. to be, you know, be like that, like them. To do that, I have to go to school. I knew I had to yeah. go to school and get serious about it. So I went to the Dick Grove. Some, uh, somebody recommended Dick Grove is good because those that school was for the professional musician. So all the students was professional musician. Right. Incredible, incredible. And they had like um, 40 people in one class. And I took a general, which is the theory and all that, and a jazz piano. And uh, cap is called composing and arrangement, and I did a film scoring. I got a four okay. years, four years of scholarship. I didn't pay anything because oh, nice, that was good. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, I only knew the, the minor and major chord, right? And after four years later, I was conducting seven piece orchestra. Wow. I was writing score, and then doing that. Then, during those school years. Because all the student was professional, they asked me to play on this, 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 this. So I was start playing uh -huh. all over in you know, LA. Like the studio, uh, did a lot of parties, you know, bus day and all kind of stuff. I even played it, it at the, the county jail. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, I did. And I was so busy. Uh, sometimes I had a three, four gigs per day like sunday wow. i had a church in the morning seven o'clock another church in ten and afternoon gigs and uh and a party at night i was 23 24 yeah. to 26 something like that that was it that was it that was the school school yeah started now, now michael did you have any formal training uh yeah yeah i did um i did music at university in, uh, in england oh okay uh, and I've, I've been a music teacher for quite a lot of my life. I've worked in schools, oh, wow. uh, teaching kids and teaching um, music lessons, instrumental lessons as well. Um, so, yeah. yeah. You know, it's it's always interesting, Michael, when you talk to somebody and you realize they sing exactly the same way as they speak. Well, he does. It was you does. without even knowing. And I knew he'd never spoken before, but... That's yeah. pretty awesome. I do. I do try to sound like me when I'm singing. I know other singers try to sound like uh, right. other people, but yeah, I try to channel my inner Michael. Yeah, yeah. but it, 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 let it me works. Let me tell you about Michael a little yeah, bit. Please. Okay, with with the, his band, he play bass, right? Yeah, and the singing, right? So I I totally he I thought he was a bass player. He was just playing the bass, right? Yeah, and now uh, uh, and, and he told me he teach drums and, and you're the drummer, right? And, and when I was checking all this Facebook where he's posting, he had a gig with a full keyboard rig and he was playing as a keyboard player, gigging. Yeah. And and next next post was he was playing the guitar. I, I think I've seen that video on Facebook where he's right, right, the right. Yeah. What the fuck? I what the fuck? <laughs> I didn't know we had another Neil Morris on our hands. I, I no know, idea. I know. I know, you know, there's so many multiplayer, yeah. but, you know, when you are gigging as a, you know, guitar and keyboard and bass and drums, it's separate. Just the gigging, I mean, oh, you yeah. make money, so you got to be good. Oh, yeah. And this guy is incredible. It's incredible. <laughs> New most. <laughs> Thanks. You know, New we're, most. We're going to play a little game here, Rio. A little game called Word Association. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a name. And you're going to tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. Doesn't that sound like fun? Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure it does. Natalie Cole. Oh, she was so hot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you want me going? 
I, I, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, please. I said one word, but now I'm intrigued. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta listen to this. So he, she has about 250 songs, right? In the repertoire, okay. charted out. Uh, the best arranger in LA because um, you know his father's, you know, duetting and all that, right? Yeah. Unforgettable, you know, all that stuff. Oh yeah. I and I was, I was a keyboard player. They were a piano player, you know, just piano player. And I was playing keyboard, which is the strings and the brass and the woodwind and all that. Right. All the parts, ham organ and all that. Every single gig, she decide set list 15 minutes before. So you better so, know every single one of those songs. No, no, no. The chart, chart, I was... I had at the strings chart over here. This is from the studio, not the live chart. Right. Strings chart and a horn chart on the, the right. And it, within the 15 minutes for 90 minutes show, I have to practice and play the boss, you know, boss keyboard. Wow. And, and, and some of intro, like a, a one minute is just strings only by myself. Oh my goodness, that was that was the hardest gig. Oh, I bet. I that bet. was highest paying gig. Yeah. Because well, she pays good. She really pays I, good. There's actually been a lot of uh you know buzz about your work with Natalie Cole. That's why that was the first uh, the first yeah. name I threw out there. Second and name she, I, I'm gonna throw your way in this game of word association. Uh Steve Lukather. Oh, because that's my buddy, my buddy. Because we're like same age, you know. Yeah. It, 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 we grew, you know, like we grew up together, kind of thing, you know. And we, you know, I talk to him a lot still. Most talented, he was that good yeah. back then. He was twenty-two, you know, yeah. for the total. He was so he's, he's monster. He's, he's he is so a monster. Bad. He's I so seen Toto good. a couple years ago, and he's still he's still a monster. <laughs> yeah, he's crazy. He's just crazy. Yeah. You know, he doesn't care. Shit. No. You know. He's Is nice. there anything he can't play? Nothing. That's what Nothing. I. That's what I want to know. Nothing. Okay, here's here's another one for you. This is fun. Al Green. Oh, so he came up. I was playing uh, the opening, the first very opening for. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Cleveland Stadium, 50,000 people. I was That was my first gig with Alisa Franklin. Oh, wow. And the play, you know, the spinning stage, you know, was getting ready. No rehearsal, nothing. Mm. Again, chart, you know, just da 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 you know, just practicing and turn the the whole stage and i saw this fifty thousand people in the front of me i said what the fuck what the fuck am i doing i'm from japan i'm a japanese little japanese <laughs> you know i don't know nothing about aretha <laughs> yeah yeah so then the last song uh da, 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 uh the freeway free love. love and run on the yeah freeway. yeah and freeway it was the last chorus in that pink cadillac yeah da, da, da. <laughs> and our green came from side of stage uh -uh. and he was going like this ha ha oh that's awesome yeah huh. <laughs> yeah freeway freeway <laughs> that's our green i said oh my god i stopped playing i said yeah oh i would too <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome here's another one here's another one this is gonna be a fun one <laughs> debbie gibson Oh, Debbie, she's so sweet. She, Isn't she? She's so sweet. She's she so seems sweet. like a really nice lady. Yeah. The uh, reason all these people I play is uh, I play with, uh, I was house arranger for Ramon Dozier. He is uh, the unit called Holland Dozier Holland, mm -hmm. uh, the brother oh, yeah. and the cousins. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, he he wrote uh, Heat Wave. You then if you're going to right song. The Lamont Dozier has 75 top 10 hits in United States. Oh, yeah. 75 oh, yeah. top 10 hits, right? Yeah. So anyway, you know every single one of them. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. And uh, I was walking in the studio, and all these people, you know, uh, came. The Barry White came to the studio, uh, and then David Gibson came to the studio, and I was walking on it, and, and she really liked what I did. Okay, uh, can you just walk with me, just you and me? Like, yeah, sure. So he came. She came to my house. Wow. I, I was living in a small duplex, you yeah. know, two bedroom house, and she just came down. And I was using the uh, tape record, the eight track, uh, oh, quarter inch yeah. tape, tiak oh, tape. <laughs> yeah, uh, this all like board and uh, oh, yeah. tape it together, right? So I was making a, a demo. She wrote some lyrics and she sang and uh, playing piano and stuff like that. And uh, during the break, she didn't have uh, much break in her life. So she lay, she lay down right in front of me and started sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's taking a nap right there. But she's Only sweet. in my dream. Yeah. She was sleeping, sleeping hard. Sweet, sweet lady, sweet girl. Sweet nice, girl. nice. Well, oh, speaking sweet. of which, what about Marilyn McCoop? Marilyn McCoop, she is my favorite uh, lady. She, I love her. She, I, love yeah. her. I love her. Fifth yeah. dimension, man. That mm. was my first uh, stage tour with the. Really? Uh, Original, uh, the reunion of original Fifth Dimension, and I was uh, I was their rehearsal pianist. Okay, and uh, went there and they liked me where I play. And she said uh, that the director, musical director, asked me to join the first tour in the U nice. U.S. East Coast in uh, LA and all that. Uh, and uh, yeah, we talked a lot. We talked a lot of lot of stuff, uh, religion, like and uh, you know, being Japanese and, and all that. Because yeah. she's been Japanese with her husband, uh, was his mate. Yeah, uh, Billy yeah. Davis Jr. Billy Davis Jr. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah, we get along good. I like nice. that. Okay, we're 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 gonna continue with the female singers. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> what's the deal with you and Dion Warwick? Yeah, Warwick is another gig. Um, is she crazy? She no, she's no, she's not. Really? No. She, she acts does. crazy on TV, man. She does. She, she was does. The Apprentice with Donald she, Trump yeah. back in the day. She just acted cuckoo, she's, man. Yeah, straight ahead. She yeah. was nice, you know, being together in the backstage. Was a nice lady. She offered me some MMM and said, oh, "Okay, she's nice." You know, I just. I was so scared back then. I was so young, and you know. Um, then I think it following that was Stevie Wonder. Uh, was it in the next door? It, it, it was. It was the benefit for Afghanistan mm. concert. Stevie yeah. Wonder, Nari Cole, Dio, and uh, some other people. And uh, Nari Cole band was house band. So we play for Stevie Wonder and then all wow. that stuff, right? Wow. And right front of the stage on this table, there were Quincy Jones and uh, and, and, and who was there? Uh, the uh, the Ali Muhammad Ali mm. was right in front of me. <laughs> oh my god, what a gig! Yeah, I bet. I bet. Yeah. How'd you play that night? Uh, good. It <laughs> <laughs> was good. Steve yeah. was good. Yeah. Anyway. Definitely. <laughs> Next. So, you know, your great grandmother was a geisha. That's Is what true? my yeah. that, that's what my family told me. Yeah. Uh, you, you see, so maybe performing was in your blood well, all along. That's what my family told me. Yeah. Because nobody else in my family. No. Playing nothing, nothing. Or no, saying you, nothing. Yeah, you. I, I think I read somewhere that uh, the first piece of music that actually might have impacted you early on was Jimmy Smith's "The Cat." <laughs> I love that song. That song's so awesome. It is. It is. It's like incredible. That was. Um, that it's was that Hammond C three going full bore, man. Nineteen sixty four. Yeah, that was a that was a great sound, man. So groovy and yeah, I love it. Yeah, I said, oh my God, the organ sounds like this. It's yeah. Like, you know, I was like, how old was it? A 10 or 15 or yeah. 12? So young, I was so young, you know. It Michael. Was great. 
what about what about you? What were some of your early influences? The the music you heard when you were a kid that kind of set yeah. you on whatever path you you're on right now. Uh, Queen were a really big. Oh. Yeah. Um, okay. I was uh, I grew up in the eighties and Queen was everywhere at the time, and I remember Freddie Mercury dying very sad. Mm. Nineteen ninety one, I think. Yeah. So I just I was yeah just at school then. Um, kind of got into the prog thing a bit later in life i think um one of my very early prog bands that i loved was manfred mann's earth band yes um i still love them very much definitely yeah his his, his prog era was dynamite yeah yeah and that led me on to genesis and that was the beginning of uh yeah beginning of my love for prog there you know you just wonder about guys like rio that played all these years and you know r&b bands and stuff like that and uh you know i don't i don't think you heard a whole lot of prog as a kid growing up in japan osaka was probably not a hotbed for prog back back in your day was it rio what, no, was, your first, what was the first time you realized there was this this thing called progressive rock out there uh well the, the case elp that was that was it ELP yeah. and we saw some video on the TV, right? And he's spinning the piano and yeah. with a knife and organ and all, all that. Stuff. Well, what the fuck? He's so yeah, crazy, man. crazy, 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 crazy. And uh, yes, the first album and you know that 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 did and Patrick Morales that was a big influence, you know, influence yeah. for me. Yeah, yeah. You know what? That's funny you say that. I do hear a little moraz in the way you play. I'm not good. I'm not good at him. He's just he's so good. He's just so good. He's, he's disgusting. Like, yeah. He's yeah. Sick. You know, all this all this classical prayer, play pro, he, he just they are sickening. Yeah. They are just sickening. Pray so fast and you know precise and uh, it's sickening. Just making yeah. me sick. I don't play like that. I just I just fake. I am a professional faker. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I am. I am. But, they play. They play no. They ask me to play notes. I just play grist. <laughs> what, what's more important, Rio? These or these? Oh, here, here, here. You know, yeah, it's, it's all upstairs. Yeah, I mean, here, here, yeah. Here, here, here. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's what a lot of people missing, you know? Yeah. You know, you can have a, many techniques as much as, you know, you want to. You can practice, practice. But, you know, you can't go <laughs> spinning, draw back, you know. You can't, you can't teach that. No. You can't learn that, you know? No. But, but, <laughs> since I joined the project, I started practicing every no. day. No. No. <laughs> really? some, you know, who who all's in this thing? You've got uh, you, obviously, Jonathan Mover, Michael Sadler. Who else is part of this project? Well, well, then uh, we got uh, Mike Bonino now and uh, Mike Canary and uh, Pete Griffin. You know, that's us right now, uh, present member. We, we changed member a lot. Yeah. Well, but uh, they basically, me and Jonathan, Jonathan created the band. Right. He's supporting financially and everything. But uh, because we are, we are so close together right now, so me and him is the band, and everybody else was just picking so much? Let me ask you, how much influence did Jonathan have over the making of the myth of the Monstrophus? Because in my mind, I always figured it was Rio and Michael Whiteman, you know, getting together, the, the brain trust. But the more I'm reading, the more I'm hearing, I, I'm I'm thinking that Jonathan Moover might have been a big part of all this. Like, oh, he was. He yeah. was. Because of a project, we were together, uh, like, every weekend we practiced. Well, the, the three years we've been practicing. We just started the first tour last year, April, but we, me and him were together for three years in wow. playing, playing, playing ELP, just him and me, drum and keyboard, right. practicing ELP and, and uh, arranging all the songs we have. We got uh, like three hours material. So we're so together. Then after 
we had a Nick playing those two songs, which is half of the album. Yeah. I got another four songs, which, which is not a half hour. Yep. I said, okay, uh, who's going to get it? Uh, Nick again or somebody else or uh, Simon Phipps or, or okay. wait a minute. I have a mover. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you oh gosh. I have a mover. Yeah. Hey, come on, mover, you want to play? Oh, yeah. That was it. And uh, we start arranging the drums, which Jimmy Keegan played on the demos. Oh, okay. Okay. Because Jimmy doesn't play drums at all on the album, right? Not on the album, but he helped me on the demo. That's yeah. why my demo CD with uh, Jimmy Keegan playing on it. And is that available on RioOkamoto.com? Yeah. You is haven't that, heard it yet. Is, are, is you, that, are you really my fan? You haven't heard my demo? I haven't heard the demos yet. You kidding me? No, no. Really? So I'm Michael, embarrassed to say I haven't heard them yet. Michael's singing all the songs. Yeah, yeah. He's singing you know, all the songs. He's playing the keyboards. He's playing the guitar. He's just, you know, only the people playing is uh, Alan Moss and uh, Jimmy Keegan. Everything yeah. else is the same thing and all that. So, uh, anyway. I got it, you know. So that's available on RioOkamoto.com. What about that shirt you're wearing? Can we Rio buy that on RioOkamoto.com? You don't have it? You, you don't have it yet? I don't, what do you man. Have it yet? Where have I been? I need to do some shopping later on. You do. Yes, you and do. I'm going to put a link to Rio's page in the description of yes. this video. And yes. I might even do the same thing for Michael's you know, website. Yeah. Why not? You know? Throw him a little bit of love too, but Thanks, uh, man. you know. <laughs> so, and if you don't have a CD, you don't. If you don't have my CD, the only way that we can make money is to buy from our yeah, well, homepage. If you buy from record company, Amazon, yeah, money, even a, a penny won't come to me. I'm sorry oh. to say, I got this from Ken Golden. Oh, you did. Is it a black or red? Black. Yeah. yeah I got the black. You know. I have red. Yeah. yeah, see, yeah. I got see. lazy. I need. I. I should have gone onto the website and ordered from you, but you know, you know how it goes. So, is it show and tell? Oh, yeah. Here we go. Right here. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see that red vinyl now. In the BC. Let's see it. I gave you red, didn't I, Michael? Is it a I, black? I got a red and a black one. Um, oh, is, you got a, you got a both? Yeah, this is my black one, unfortunately. So I, my red one's in in my in my house. Oh, okay. Um, cool. I can't show you the red one right now, but it's beautiful. It looks yeah, I, yeah. Put it away because I'm going to frame this somewhere. Yes. On the wall. It's great artwork. Uh, Thomas does nice work. He oh, does. he's incredible. He does all the, the Spock's beard, all yeah. of them. He's great. The he's great. He's, he's one of my favorite artists. I really love what he does. But, yeah. uh, you know, there was another Thomas involved in this whole endeavor. A guy by the name of Thomas Waver from Inside Out. What what kind of support or, you know, Inside Out, what, they were just fine? Oh, let real, me tell real, you about, what, let me tell you about Weber. Let me tell about, he's the president of Inside Out. Yeah. Spock's Beard was the first band. He... But tour together after the release the light the first album. Uh no. The the B I think it was after the B Will Darkness. I think it was, yeah. Yeah, and then we did a tour in Germany, uh maybe like a two weeks tour, you know, small club we started, right? With but with the tour bus and all that. So the Thomas, whoever is president of Inside Out, he was our tour manager. Oh wow. He was our tour manager, wow, wow, wow. and uh, uh, we we pissed together. We just uh, the the one gig they didn't have a uh, shower, so we went to YMCA, and we all the Spock's beer and Thomas was naked in the shower room and talking right. about you know who has the biggest thing, you know all that yeah, stuff. Where, where's the video of that one? I know. Well, actually, Neil just uh, emailed me. He has some. Uh, this is not that but he has a footage of uh opening uh the supposed to be opening for dream theater yeah and that time i was a tour manager oh, and wow. there was no money so we couldn't get uh we couldn't right. get a tour bus so okay. i rented rv and put the trailer in the back 
and drove across the country and you know that he found the videotape of that. Nice. So it's gonna be released pretty soon. Anyway, oh, cool. yeah. Back to the Thomas Weber. Uh very German. He very Oh yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, I like it. Yo, yeah, okay. I'll give you money. How much do you want? Ten thousand? No, I'll give you two thousand, right? It's so German, so straight, you know. Yeah. Japanese can be that way. But yeah. nice guy. He, you know, he loves Prague. He just Prague, you know. So, so you, whatever. Got enough, you got enough of it in advance to get that Mellotron fixed up, right? Uh, not quite. <laughs> Cost me like uh, $1,700 to fix it. Yeah, yeah. And Too worth every money. penny. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, it ain't Prague oh, without the Tron, man. Yeah, I'm telling you. Yeah. And even Prague, even though Keith Emerson never played one. Oh, you're right. What's up with that? He hated it. Really? The Mellotron. Wow. He never liked it. He hated wow. how it sounded. He hated the feel of it. He didn't like them tapes. And uh, he was probably right. I know the early uh, early guys using that Mellotron had all kinds of problems. Rick Wakeman picking up radio stations in the middle of End You and I and just all kinds of crazy stuff going on. Uh, the tapes breaking and, you know, all kinds of stuff. No, not only that, because Tron is atmosphere. Yeah. It's not the plane, the rhythm. No. It's not playing. You know, that's why those kids and all that people, you know, doesn't get you know familiar with it because the, the genesis you see all this atmosphere and you're gonna right. create this vision that's not Tron, what it's all about tron does tron yeah. does tron only one does it so it's a different style yeah yeah definitely and uh you know i i, I only came to that realization a few years ago listening to elp realizing they don't have not one bit of mellotron in any one of their songs that's just so no. weird to me i just yeah, I don't know. But, uh, you know, I mentioned GPS. And, uh, you know, why why didn't we put you in the name? You know, okay. G was Guthrie and P was, uh, you know. Uh, well, that was, that was after fact, Jay right? And Thomas yeah, Payne, well, Joe Payne. So, uh, once again, Thomas Waver, the yeah. inside out, he recommended me to ah. GPS because uh, John Payne kept – Asia, yeah. After, uh, after uh, you know that he took over, right, for like a twenty years, right? Yeah. And he was making another album as Asia, but the original Asia reunited. Right. Right. So Jeff Downs was with the Asia with the John Payne, but Jeff has to go back to the original Asia. Therefore, the album John Payne was making current title as Asia. So yeah. he, you know, came up with the GPS because of uh, the member accepted Jeff. It's, uh, who, who, who else is there? Uh, J, uh, jo, uh, J, J, uh, J the drummer. Yeah. J, yeah from, uh, he's playing them with the yes now. And right. Gathery Groban. Oh, that so boy is disgusting, by yeah, the way. So, so three of them that was making album already and the, the album cover and everything, except they didn't have a keyboard on the yeah. recording. They have to replace Jeff with the, right. somebody else. So Thomas Waba recommended me and you know, went okay. there and played. That's it. Yeah, it's a great record, too. I really, really do like it. Me too. Great fun. We, we did a tour in UK. And we went to Japan, did a couple of shows too. Uh, so. Speaking Guthrie. of which, speaking of playing live and touring, who's got some live dates to talk about? Is the project uh, got some dates uh, booked, or what? What do we got going on? I know you did a couple Myth of the Monsterfish shows in LA. How'd that with, go? With him, with the Michael. You How was him? Did you fly him out? Nice. Yeah, he threw me out. We did a week of rehearsals with an incredible band. Yeah, who was all in the band? The live band. Uh, so we had Jonathan Mover on the drums, mm. doing all the songs. Yeah, he was great. Pete Griffin on the bass, Rio and a guy called Kevin on the keyboards, and uh, Joey Fravola, who plays in a band called Kairos, UK band, but yeah. he's based in the states. Yeah. Good, good. That's a good band, good. yeah, yeah. And a couple Bonilla. of guitarists, Mark Bonilla, and of course Alan Morse. Mm. 
and Rio's wife Keiko on backing vocals. We got nine people there. So, it, so it was. It wasn't just let's throw a bunch of scrubs together and try to <laughs> maybe sort of duplicate no. what we had on record. This is a pretty much of an all star cast there. That's pretty. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And we, I recorded uh, uh, thirty two tracks, thirty four tracks, and uh, like we have like seven cameras. So wow. we are working on it right now. All right. Like, That's like a DVD, awesome. DVD. Yeah. And then, then talking about the shows, me and Marco are talking about uh, doing a show in the UK. Oh wow! Yeah, we'd love to do some UK dates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you going to have to put the band together, Michael? I think so. I think we're going to have yeah, a funny yeah. UK-based band. Yeah. Why well, Rio to the UK? There you go. And, uh, well, we had Rio's beard, right? So maybe we'll have a uh, Michael's whale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's we were, that's what we're talking about. And, and uh, Joy, uh, Joy Ferreira, the who played on uh, my um, my show in LA, he played with a Cairo, a uh, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Kiro UK. So he go to UK a lot. So we can grab him. And I'm not going to his band and all that. We we'll practice maybe, you know, a week and do the show. Uh, I think it goes well That's in the UK. Absolutely. That's what we're talking about. What about, and, uh, Pro- what about the project? Are we doing, uh, uh, we're doing yeah, some doing So the plan is in May. We're doing, uh, uh, just like last year, we do uh, mostly East Coast right. uh, one month. And uh, with the same people, we just play in L.A., which is Can- Mike Canary and uh, Mark Bonilla are singing lead. And so we got two guitar players. Mm. And uh, that's May. And uh, we're going to do another tour, uh, August and September, which is um, we're just going to cover whole, whole states. Then next year, we're going to go to Europe. So that's All right. All right. Yeah. I was wondering if Europe was uh, going to be happening. Nope. Yeah, it's gonna be happening. Because I think I'm, that I think that would go over really well. Really well. Yeah. Really well. Yeah, really absolutely. well. Hey, yeah. hey, hey, Michael. Hey. Uh, that fourth album, you still gonna be on Plain Groovy, or you got a bigger deal coming? Um, we it's an independent release. Okay. Um, we've talked to Plain Groovy. Uh, they don't want to do another final release. Can I find yeah. a better way of saying that? Yeah. Um, we're not going to do a vinyl release of album four, yeah. um, so it's just going to be a CD release. But we're going to do a bumper CD and a deluxe edition with a really nice box and everything. Uh, ha- have you have you tried Inside Out? Um, I have spoken. I've sent them emails a couple of times, and they haven't okay. been interested. But that might be worth another go. Maybe I should. Give I, them I, I I I don't know. I, I think uh, it might be worth another crack because uh, if Thomas is any kind of the businessman, I think he is. He's got good ears, man. He he can listen. Oh, to he what, has good ears. Well, yeah, yeah, he can listen to what's going on. But uh, yep, he yeah. does. He does. If it's good, he will. You know, he yeah. will support. Oh, it's good. It's yeah. real good. <laughs> well, you know, I didn't expect you to come on here and say it was the worst thing you ever recorded. But <laughs> <laughs> I would love you forever for the honesty. But you know, <laughs> the trajectory has been nothing but on, on the upswing here. For I am the manic whale, and for yeah. those of you that don't know, it is an anagram of Michael Whiteman. It so is. the name isn't that silly when you think about it like that, right? It, it makes sense now, right? <laughs> for sure. But I, I am definitely looking forward to a fourth I am the manic whale album. Uh, Myth of the Mastrophus was one of the great albums of 2022. Rio Okamoto, one of the greatest keyboard players of the modern era. I am just so excited and happy that you two fine gentlemen decided to come on board and talk to me a little bit here today. It's been awesome. It's Um, fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, anytime you guys want to come on board and just talk about stuff, you're always welcome. If you want to come on and just talk about you know, prog music that we can do that too. But, uh, you know, next, next time we've got an album release, we should probably do this again. Right, Michael? Scott, I'll give you a shout out when Monica. <laughs> All right. Good um, deal. Good deal. Release date's been announced. Yeah. I'd love to come back and chat to you again. Well, thank you so much for uh, all your hard work. Myth of the Mastrophus, is just such an incredible album. And Michael Whiteman is a big, big reason why that is. Rio, you are the man. You already know that, though. You know Much that. love to you and to your beautiful <laughs> wife. You thank know, you. I see you in front of that grand piano there. I was wondering if you were going to be sitting in front of your Mellotron, but even better, he's, he's in front <laughs> of the piano. That's just awesome, man. Thank Great. you guys so much. You're welcome. 
Thank you for having us. Thanks, guys. I really enjoyed this. Thank you so much. You. you guys are the best. I'm going to do a little send off by myself to my peeps. Yeah. That was Michael Whiteman and Rio Okamoto. I am Scott. You are in the Prague Corner. God bless you and God bless the king. Peace in the Middle East. <laughs>